Hello, my name is Brian Sitch, I'm Curator of Archaeology at Manchester Museum and I'm here with Henry McGee, who's Head of Collections and Curator of Zoology. We're recording this interview as part of the thematic collecting project and it's an interview about migration and the migration of birds. Henry, when my wife Christine and I were on holiday in Super in the Peloponnese in Greece uh, in May 2015, we noticed uh, a rather unusual bird perched on the roof of the apartment block opposite where we were staying and I, I realised it was a little owl and it was quite surprising really to see it out during the day. It, it came out about five o'clock every afternoon and it, it, it announced its presence by calling and its, its call was a bit like the barking of a small dog and you could just about set your, your watch by, by its appearance during the day. And it would sit on the roof quite happily, watching the world go by. Sometimes it would, be, it would be mobbed by small birds, but eventually it would fly away, presumably to go hunting. Um, I've, I've read that these fascinating little birds also are found in the UK. Is, is, is the UK part of their range, or is, is there some other reason why they're in the UK? Yeah, I mean, there's, there's quite an interesting story with the little owls. Um, because they're not originally from Britain, they're from kind of southern Europe and across into Central Asia. Um, and they were actually they were introduced into Britain in the late 19th century by a by a, a famous ornithologist called Lord, called Lord Lilford, um, and he lived in Northamptonshire. He was very wealthy. He lived at L Lilford Hall. He was a very famous ornithologist, and he he um, had poor health, so he used to collect live birds, and he had them at, a, at his his home. And he had all kinds of very amazing things. So he had every species of crane in the world alive. Um, he had lo he loved birds of prey, and he, he actually had vultures that vultures. used to fly around the village. <laughs> at Lammergeier vultures, which are absolutely you know huge birds, Amazing. so they must have been quite spectacular. Um, and it was him who introduced little owls into Britain, and he, because he used to love going to the Mediterranean, um, pro probably for the benefit of his health. Um, and he used to sail around in a yacht, and he used to collect birds, and presumably he used to see these these little owls. Uh, and they are a bit unusual because people always think that owls come out at night and um, they've got the big eyes and the big round face. Uh, I've got a little owl here. Um, so the little owl, it's, owls are very distinctive of course, they've got a big, big, great big head, um, very round face. Um, little owls have got these big yellow eyes and you can kind of tell what time of day owls are active from the colour of their eyes. So owls which come out in the day tend to have yellow eyes, like little owls mm. and short-eared owls. Um, Long-eared owls are very nocturnal and have very orangey-red eyes. And the tawny owls, the most nocturnal of all, it's got very black eyes. And, I mean, the little owls are associated with the Greek goddess Athene. The, the little bird, its scientific name is Athene Noctua. And the story would be that, is, is Athene the goddess of wisdom? Of wisdom, yes. Right. And you, do you see you see these things on coins? They do appear on coins. In fact, we have one in the numismatic collection right. of the museum. Um, I think the the idea would be that owl, I'm not sure if this is the right story, but owls are associated with wisdom because they have this very kind of human-looking face. With you know, like we have a kind of flat face, two eyes, and a nose, and so on. Um, but the slightly strange thing with owls is what you're looking at. That's not the front of its face that's the top of its head. So the owl spends its whole life looking down because it has, they have huge eyes and the only way that the head can accommodate the eyes is by looking kind of straight out the top. And it kind of makes sense if you think about it because the owl's beak is below its eyes, you know, its beak's at the front of, okay. it, at the front of its head. And they're, love, they're absolutely lovely and they have, um, they're supposed to have that, not so much on this species, but on other ones, they have a kind of false face on the back of their head. Um, you can see a bit of whiteness here, but, but they're lovely little things. Um, and there used to be a lot of debate in Britain as to whether they were a pest. Um, and there was a big inquiry as to what they, what they eat, and it was found that they live on big insects. They mostly eat things like dora beetles and cockchafers and, um, and, and worms. Um, and they're actually much rarer now than they used to be. They they spread from Lilford, you know, they spread across England into southern Scotland. 
Um, and then they've, but they've declined quite a lot recently. They live where it's like there are quarries or walls or kind of rough grassland. Um, they nest in they nest in amongst walls or old barns, and they're 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 very kind of characterful. They make a funny kind of like a yell. Um, I don't suppose they do very well in our cold win winters either, do they? Um, no, I don't think so. I think the ones which live in Central Asia they might migrate further south, but I'm not sure about that. Um, but they're lovely, and I, I, I hope they can spread a bit more because well, they're well, nice to see. Let's hope so. It's wonderful to see them. Thank you very much. You're welcome.